Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is July 18th, 2019. Please subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. And we've got a great list today, and we're going to pass this right over to Miss Vegas, and she's going to mention them. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully you had a great trading day. Definitely we're going to be talking about Boeing. We're going to talk about Starbucks and gold, because gold is hot, GDX in particular. We're going to talk about McDonald's, and we're going to talk about Microsoft, because they had their earnings today. So let's get started. We're going to talk about Boeing. You know, last night, Jim and I, you know, if you guys listen to our videos and follow and subscribe, you would know that we're very bullish on Boeing. But I got to tell you, I wasn't sure how to handle this this morning, because, you know, Boeing every day, I wake up and I'm not sure what it's going to do. Um, and uh, woke up and saw this morning that it was at 367.60 and, you know, closed yesterday at 369.52. I was like, oh, holy crap, this is not looking very promising today to have a continuation. And uh, it held a little bit and then pulled back. And then I thought, okay, we're going to have to look at some puts. So I actually had to close my option calls that I had, um, that I had originally had paid um, $60 for and closed them around 45 and then bought some puts for the 360 puts that expire tomorrow. And I was just going to day trade that one in particular because not, again, not sure how Boeing's going to behave. But you know what? We did very well on those. The high of day on that one was 203 for the 360 puts uh, because Boeing did go as low as 359.75. Um, the reason I actually got rid of the puts at one point, I will say, um, Jim noticed a TTM squeeze. Um, I was kind of thinking the stock's still actually bearish. Um, but he obviously didn't think so. And uh, I thought, you know what, I better get some calls here because it looks like the stock is also going to start reversing. So maybe about half an hour, maybe 20 minutes after he noticed it is when I started to see the action on the chart going on a reversal. Um, the other thing, too, is I noticed yesterday, too, a huge volume spike, a huge block trade over $52 million going into Boeing. And here we are with news here after hours. And the news really is the fact that they're going to have an after-tax charge of $4.9 billion, which is about 874 a share with regards to the you know consideration for the disruptions related to the 730 MAX grounding and obviously delays of delivering this type of an aircraft because there was a lot of orders for the 737 MAX and they had to actually delay the deliveries for these aircrafts. Um, so basically what's gonna happen is this charge is gonna result in a 5.6 billion reduction of revenue and pre-tax earning for the quarter. So you know what, it seems like all of this to me looks like it's already baked into the stock. Um, I mean, a lot of damage has happened here all this time and I think they already knew that. So I think they're just waiting for this PR to come out and announce like what they're gonna, how they're gonna, you know, what's the damage here and give us the number. So Jim, let's hear what you think about Boeing because right now after hours, it is ripping. And uh, it's gone all the way back to 369. Oh, Let's yeah. hear what you say about the Boeing. Well, we had a great run on Boeing this year. I mean, it did form a bottom at 292.47 back at the end of the year. And I predicted in my crystal ball that we were going to have an excellent year in 2019. And that's what we've mostly seen. This thing ran all the way up to 446. And then that bad news came into Boeing about the two plane accidents. And... And the thing has kind of dropped off and sold off ever since. We did reach a bottom from that sell-off right around this 336 area. And it actually dipped lower than that a couple times to 330. Here in the past couple of months, though, it's kind of rebounded. And it hit a little resistance level right at 374.83. With a couple tops up there right around the 378.66 area. Give or take a few cents. I'm going to draw that trend line in. But... We've been watching this for the last 20 days. I mean, we watch it every day. It's on our calendar every day. But the last 20 days, we had a high of 37, double top of 378.66. And then she pulled on back and hit a low support of 347.90. And we were calling this out in the room the last couple of weeks. As you know, Miss Vegas has called this out twice and had two great runs on it. So I'm going to pull it now to the five day. We're going to look at the five day, five minute. So today we had a huge pullback and a huge sell off on this thing. She recognized this right out of the gate because we were calling this on the way up for the last five days. And then today it decided to go ahead and sell off. So I got to looking at this trade and I'm going to pull this up to a daily one minute. 
And on this daily one minute chart, I have what you call a TTM squeeze. I don't know if you've ever traded with it or not, but it's, it's a tool that I've used in the past and I'll use, keep on using it. I've been using it with a case study all week along with my EMAs. I have the 200, the 34, and the 9. So we started pulling back to this lower support right around the 361.18 area and I thought that was a good idea to get in here. And so we, we I decided to go ahead and get in the trade and then it went ahead started to have a little I would say an ascending triangle right here and I called that ascending triangle out and I thought it was going to go ahead and break on up instead she went ahead and broke on down she pulled back to a low down here right around 359.87 something like that so then closing at the end of the day it started bouncing it bounced up a little bit and then she went ahead and pulled on back again at in the close then the news popped up after hours well, Miss Vegas got in a couple of calls. She got in a 10 cent call down there, 10 or 11 cent. I forgot what the price was. And then after hours, the news came and it's already bounced up to my resistance level that I have here at 369.70. So that's going to be the resistance we got to break. And after hours, we're setting up an ascending triangle. So if this thing decides to pull back, it's going to pull back to probably, I would say, no lower than 366.30. We have a 370 target on this. I'm going to pull up the 20 day. I'm hearing some scratching going on, so I don't know what that is. But we have some double top right here at the 370 level, and we got to bring it on up to the next resistance, which is here right around the 370.60. That's going to be your next target. And then one right after that's going to be 371.62. And then the final one's going to be right here at 373.09. Pullback support's going to be that lower support that I mentioned at 367.48. All the way down to maybe, if it decides to go down here, at a red line resistance right here around 365.34. But we're bullish on this stock. Today was just a good little red day. And they've had them before. But I'm, I got a long target on Boeing to 390. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be G, I mean, Starbucks. Okay. Well, you know what? Starbucks, I have been watching this stock for a long time. When I say a long time, I mean, okay, it's not been like months and months and months, but I will say at least two months I've been watching and following Starbucks. And I am so pleased to see this. I mean, again, I have, I cannot, I, I'm serious, Jim. Like, I cannot even stress this enough. You have a small account. You should be learning how to trade some options um, because I have actually given some option calls on this actual stock on Starbucks. And specifically, we gave the Starbucks calls. And, you know, it's because I was looking at the chart, looking at the volume, looking at the, um, the fundamentals of the company. And I really like the fact that Starbucks is in great shape. And I did give the calls here. And I'd like Jim to show this, please, Jim. So I'm yes, just going to send it to you. So this was yesterday. I mean, and again, these are not things that take a long time. So this here in particular, where are you, Jim? There you are. So <laughs> I don't know who's scratching anything. Um, so here we go. So I did alert yesterday at 1.26 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I did alert Starbucks calls to the group. Um, to, to consider a Starbucks call of $90 strike, and those were $0.33, cents and they expire Friday. So technically, kind of, you know, a very short swing trade, um, unless, of course, it goes crazy the same day that you buy it. Well, you know what? On Starbucks, um, I did alert the 90 calls and the 91s for the smaller accounts. Well, you know what? The people that got the $90 option call, those went from what price was that, Jim? Can you tell me what price? 169 right now. Exactly. But what price did I alert it at? 33 oh, cents. At 33 so cents. So yesterday, and even, and you know what? Even let's just say no one bought them yesterday because they're like, oh, I don't like to hold an option call. I just like to day trade them. Okay, you know what? That's fine. You know what? This morning, that same call opened up at um, 60 cents, just so you know. And it actually pulled back and went as low as 34. And then, and then it actually um, reversed. So, I mean, it had a beautiful day. 
and uh, sorry, it opened up at, at uh, 60, yeah, and it pulled back to 34. So you know what? Um, beautiful Dan Starbucks, new highs. And uh, the people that got the $91 uh, calls did very well too. Those ones were cheaper. Those ones, I believe they paid around 15 cents. And you know what? They went all the way to 73 on the ask high of day of 68. I mean, honestly, like you just put in a little bit of money and you can do very well. So Jim, let's hear about uh, your thoughts on Starbucks because to me, this is going to have a, some sort of continuation. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm going to pull up this little diagram here that I have on this chart. I'm going to see if I can pull it up on the three month, see what a three month looks like. I called an ascending triangle breakout on this a couple of a couple weeks back. We had a high right here, right around 84.71. You can see the ascending triangle. This thing right here, that's what you call an ascending triangle breakout. So for the past seven days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, it's popped up, created a little resistance up there at 87.80, and then today we had another breakout. So I'm going to pull this up now to a 20-day. To 20 day chart you can see the sending triangle breakout so this has been more than a couple of days this goes all the way back to a couple of weeks ago when this breakout began it created a little channel here between 8692 to 8780 for about four days and then popped out of that then it's had nothing but another resistance level up here and pulled back to the 34 ema riding that nine all the way up well, we broke out from that nine. You got a spread up here right now at 91.78 high. I see a resistance right at, and I adjust my resistance with the base of the candle. I think the gift is in the wick of a candle. That's the where the weakness lies. So I'm going to draw another trend line here at one at 92.25, and I'm going to put another one. This is on a one-hour chart. And this is how I draw a lot of these up. So now I'm going to go to what I would call the daily one minute. I'm going to draw a trend line right here. So this is how I see this trade right now. I see a low, low, low support. Low support if it decides to sell off right here at 90.33. I see the second support right here around 90.77. So that's a 40 cent difference, 43 cent difference. Your first support is going to be here at 91.25 with a resistance to break out. And we are up there right now after hours at 91.76. It did hit a 91.78 high. So we're looking to pull up a year's chart on this. This is a year high we had today at 91.54. So I'm telling you, this thing can start moving up a little bit higher. And there's this has... There's so many coffee shops that Starbucks puts out and has very little competition. And Vegas likes the Starbucks. You know, I used to drink there a lot until I started falling in love with my own roast, doing my own coffee. And I do mine at home. I like to grind my own beans up and get as fresh as I can. But so the, I'm going to pull back them supports again and give you the resistance. It's going to be that breakout of the high today. And it can move on up to 100 bucks. So it just oh, have to, oh my god we just have to, we just have to let let time tell but this thing's run from fifty dollars in one year I know and do you remember when I talked about the stock <laughs> well, that's when we used when to talk about it. we've been together for two years trading together more than two years every day well, I think it's five days a week yeah so the resistance unreal the resistance we got to break is ninety one seventy six that's what's benefit about when you hang around with this person for such a long time you get the hang of each other and you start to read each other's minds and Vegas has been one of the best ladies I've ever traded with she's taught me a lot and I think I've taught her some and it just combined she's very good about the uh, analyzing a stock and, and other stuff but you hear how we do the videos I more or less talk about the charts but she's also a good chartist herself so low support is going to be right here at 90.33. The second one, 90.77. The first support is going to be at 91.25. The resistance to break is going to be 91.76. And at Starbucks, we're very bullish on this trade. Let it pull back a little. Those are the best times to get in. Don't chase it. The next one we're going to talk about is a little bit of gold. 
and that's GDX. Okay, so I do want to say also on Starbucks, I mean, I probably will look to roll up the option calls. So I don't know what I'm going to get tomorrow. I want to see how it goes. And then I can definitely share it on social media. So subscribe and follow and you can certainly see what I'm going to be doing because I will share it. Um, so I do want to say, so the gold, few, I mean, the gold, definitely the gold related ETFs are crushing the markets and analysts have been saying that the metal has room to run. Um, you know, gold futures are brandishing lustrous gains. Uh, it's definitely a popular exchange traded fund as obviously ETF. Um, and they're focused on companies that mine the gold metal. And this is definitely on fire. Okay. There's a lot of momentum building in the miners again. And it's likely that the next leg higher is actually starting. We actually saw yesterday a breakout on the gold in the gold sector um and so definitely we can see that gold futures are actually up nearly 13 percent so far for the year and um obviously there's the analysts one of the analysts at forex.com uh fawad razakwara he actually said that the gold has more room to run he said that the bulls next target could be under underside of the rising trend capping the prior highs which come in around 1460. he said very important 1500 dollar hurdle uh, and that's like actually for one of those gold bars. So as a result, as you can see, uh, GDX is one of those uh, gains. I mean, this is definitely doing so well. And uh, you know what, Jim, we had an option call and Jim can show it to you. And we just have, I mean, I don't even know how we can keep up, keep up with so many good ones. And I mean, I want to be in so many, but I mean, there's only so many I can handle. But like on GDX, we had that one for 19 cents. Can you show that? Do you have that one there or no? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we have that one for 19 cents. Jim can show you that. For, and that was today. Like, seriously, today, like 11, 14 a.m. I alerted GDX because that gold is hot. And you see, I did write that in the alert. Gold is hot. I mean, I, I, I try to keep these calls really clean and simple. Um, and uh, you know what? 19 cents, which is $19 investment. And guess where that one went? I mean, GDX. I mean, even I did alert, by the way, on the stock. I did alert uh, the room that they should trade. Like, there's a lot of people that don't trade options. So I said you should be going long on GDX of the 20 at um, on the actual stock. So if you look at uh, GDX 2750 calls, they went from 19 cents, $19, high of day, 81 cents. I mean, this is crazy. And you know what? Even after hours, Jim, you won't even believe this. But on the actual tape, I don't know if you can look at your tape, but on my tape, it shows huge order here of 894,000 shares, yep. 927 at $28.25. So this actual option call went into the money. So we did actually buy the 2750 call. We even have ones for $28 for next week. Um, so we did definitely, we traded the option. We also traded the stock. Um, it opened at 26.91. We did alert the trade and um, people went long on the stock. They went long, I think from about $27 and they ran it all the way into the 28th. So, you know, congrats to even the day traders on this. Uh, people are making money on both angles, both option calls and stocks trade going long on the stock. So Jim, what do you have to say about GDX? This GDX was one of our plays of the day, and this is the one we picked out for day. The idea was right at 19 cents and ran a high of 81 cents of 326% with volume of 92.7 million. And the time called was at 11.14 Eastern time and was called out by Vegas. And this was I Love Stocks play of the day. But we're going to go, and also we're just not an options room. We, we do scalp and swing trades too. And so it, it's it's a combination of every th thrill you'd want. We also do pre-market and rerun trade ideas scanner in the morning. So it'd be nice for you to follow us, and we offer a week free trial in the room. We're going to pull up the stock right now. If There she is. Just a beautiful trade. Right out of the gate, you know it had a dip pre-market, and we knew that gold's on the hot plate right now, so I don't know how she picked this out, if it popped up on the scanner or, or however, but it definitely ran from the low down here of 26.78, and right now, after hours, we're creating a, a descending triangle pattern, and I'll show you what one looks like. 
not descending, ascending. That's where it goes with higher lows, and you get a flat top right here, right around the 28, 28 area. So we got to break a resistance of 28, 28. We're going to pull up the yearly chart. We're going to see if this is a yearly high. Today was a year high on this trade. So we're going to kind of assume that maybe we're going to get a pullback tomorrow. We're going to look at the 20-day real fast. If I can get there, I'm going to call a low support down here. The first support is going to be at 27.94. The second one's going to be at 27.60 with a solid support. And I'm going to adjust this just a little bit at 26, 27.26 to 27.32, somewhere in there. Actually, it could go a little bit lower. We could see 27.21 to maybe a 27.33. And that's what I'm looking at for a low support on this trade right now. And if it decides to die off, it can go down here to 26.93 and maybe a lower support down here at this level right here at 20, 26.33. 26.46, excuse me. And we're going to pull this up to a daily, one minute. And I'm going to see if I see the same thing. Yeah, there's that 26.46 right here. Your second support's going to be right in here between this 27.19 to 27.26. And your first low support, first support's going to be at 27.60. And then, you know, if it pulls back to this 27.94 and bounces back up, that's going to be a good luck charm. So any of these trend lines in this area right here is going to be your supports. And the resistance we got to break is going to be the 2731. And that's GDX and that's gold. It can pull back a little bit. Don't rush into a trade. At, wait until the time is right. The indicators that prove that it's going to go up. And then the last one, or we got one more. We're going to, we got two more we're going to talk about. And the next one's going to be McDonald's. Well, McDonald's, you know what? I have to say last week I had an option call McDonald's and it was a fake out breakout. I actually thought McDonald's was going to have that move and it actually didn't. So I was very disappointed. Oh uh, and I actually took a uh, loss on those calls um, because they just didn't move the way they were supposed to. So that was really unfortunate. But you know what? You can't expect every single trade 100%, 100% every single trade. It doesn't work like that. And uh, not every trade is going to be 100. I mean, you know, sometimes it's 50%, 40%. But, I mean, listen, those kind of returns are unheard of. You can't get that from your banker, you know. Um, so, nevertheless, going back to McDonald's and sticking to the facts here, um, I've been watching this stock. I watch it every single day, just like BA I watch every day. A lot of these stocks I'm talking about today, I'm actually watching every single day. And uh, I've been watching McDonald's every single day. I'm very bullish on McDonald's. Uh, they had news yesterday, which I didn't get to share but they did decide to cancel their contract with Uber Eats. Uh, they're actually going to be going with DoorDash instead. They like the footprint with DoorDash better. And so eventually they're going to phase out Uber Eats and slide over to DoorDash. So those of you that currently use Uber Eats to order McDonald's, um, or maybe your kids use Uber Eats to order McDonald's, uh, let them know. Soon they better have DoorDash because eventually you will not be able to order uh, through the app on Uber for McDonald's. Um, so going to McDonald's here, um, there was a low here of 213.33. And I was watching the stock this morning too on McDonald's. And uh, I said to myself this morning, you know, I got to keep my eyes on the stock. And I, it wasn't until like about 935 ish that I did notice, okay, McDonald's looks like it's starting to have some action here. And I need to see what's going on. And then I did alert the call. So the call that I did alert was the strike target of 215. And those option calls on McDonald's um were 45 cents and they are just for until tomorrow and uh those ones went from 45 cents all the way up to you won't even believe this a dollar 30 on the ass but the high of day was only 121 so you know not too bad almost 300 percent but not quite again another big runner on mcdonald's and it's just about catching it right on the break um it had a nice breakout i will say all the way till about uh let me see i'll tell you till about 10 24 in the morning beautiful run uh the first hour of the morning practically and then boom it just started going down and it did this all day and then around two o'clock 203 p.m notice that the stock was reversing and even the whole day like even at one o'clock i kind of said you know people were messaging me in the room 
Uh, what should I do with my option call? Uh, I like it. I don't like it. I said, listen to me. McDonald's is bullish. I really like the stock. Um, just you know, in your it's your you know it's your trade, but I like it. So I said, if you have more than one call, uh, if you have one call, take profits. You can always buy it again tomorrow. Uh, if you have more than one, you can sell a big chunk and just keep a couple until tomorrow. Because don't forget, these do expire tomorrow. So it's kind of like a day trade swing trade, but just swinging into for one day. Um, so we're holding McDonald's, just a few calls. A lot of people sold them, a lot of them today. Um, and Jim, I'd like to hear your thoughts on McDonald's because uh, still long on McDonald's. Right. And also people are trading. Uh, I know some um, large cap traders uh, that are in the room um, that like longer term holds for uh, their investment accounts. Uh, they have messaged me and said that they've been long on McDonald's since about 203, 205. And so they're just, you know, slowly socking away shares of McDonald's. They're not even looking at it. Um, they like it. They want it. Some of them are taking it to 230, 250. Something so, freaky just um, had happened. I don't know yeah. if it's they had a fat okay, finger. We had a fat finger on this and someone I here had a fat finger just now because here it is on uh, McDonald's. Well, I don't know about that. The one twenty two oh seven four. Four twenty seven four oh seven. Well, let me let me explain. How much? It, 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 it was at three sixty nine ninety six, and all of a sudden this order came in for three sixty. Are you talking about Boeing? We're talking about McDonald's oh. right now. Oh, what am I doing? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I see. I see. I see what you mean. Three sixty one eleven. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I was looking at something else here. Okay. Well, this is McDonald's. We did break past resistance here at two fifteen seventy one. We had a high up here at 217. I mean, this thing jumped up for some reason up here at 217 right here. So we're going to pull up the yearly chart, take a good look at the yearly chart. And she's had a nice run all the way from 153 all the way up to 215 to 215.95. And then we're going to go ahead and bring this down to a 20 day. And we're riding up this channel today, and then she finally broke out of that channel after hours. And I brought this up in the room, talking about this channel that we had to break. And here we are. We broke that resistance level of 216.22, and my next resistance on this trade is up here at 217.95. So, I mean, this is a beautiful after-hour breakout to that 217 area. And I'm going to pull this up on the one minute. And she did pull back down here, right to um, um, a little above that resistance line level, but she has landed at this 215.93. So if it does decide to pull back tomorrow, we could see 215.19, and right now that's running up against the 200 EMA. And the resistance level that we got to break is going to be this 215.93. So we got 215.18, 215.93, and I have another support down here at 214.94 which ain't really a big much to mumble about. So we'll bring it down here to the 214.68, no lower than that. And I see a little resistance, a little support level here at the 214.92. I'm going to draw that in. So that's McDonald's. we got to break that year high. I think now that I see this 217, that's going to be my target. At 217, if it not tomorrow, it'll be next week. If it pulls back, and this has been just a great running stock. Just look at the year chart. I don't see no reason why it would give any trouble. Since they got new management, they've changed the menu around. they got great coffee now. I only eat at McDonald's once a year, and I ate it at the airport down in Texas. I think my Big Mac meal cost me almost $11. And that's MCDL. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be Microsoft. You yeah, there? the ticker is just the ticker of McDonald's is just MCD. Well, what I say? MCDL. <laughs> <laughs> I better focus. Jim, Jim's not focused, guys. I've been at it all day. Uh, long day, long day. Okay, last but not least is Microsoft. Microsoft had their earnings today, and I know that people were some of them were buying uh, option calls on um, Microsoft, but nevertheless, uh, people buying the stock. And you know, if you saw earlier this week, I mean, Congress has been very you know, scrutinizing technology that you would think that Amazon, Google, and Facebook are the biggest tech companies around. But actually, I will say Microsoft is the biggest quiet giant. 
not only is it the largest technology company, but it is the largest publicly traded company of any kind with a market cap of more than $1 trillion, okay? So the success continues in the most recent quarter. Microsoft said today that the company did have its sales growth by 12% to $33.7 billion and that um, it had $13.2 billion in profits during that time, which was aided by $2.6 billion in tax benefits, which did beat analyst expectations. Um, basically, the strong results indicate that large companies are still investing in the new technology. They don't really care about the trade war. And the biggest debate really is at $1 trillion, how can you get bigger from here, which is what one of the analysts from UBS, Jennifer Lowe, did mention. Um, and the other thing, too, is it's all about the cloud. The 12% sales jumped from the cloud. And so, you know, we keep hearing about the cloud, but I'm sorry, but the cloud is what is uh, making things grow. I mean, Amazon is the cloud computing leader. It is the provider of choice for digitally uh, native companies like Netflix. But Microsoft has found traction with large corporations and organizations. And that was a comment stated by Ms. Lowe from UBS. So you know what? She's very smart. She knows what she's talking about, uh, like her comments. So Jim, let's hear about this chart on Microsoft because people are going to be watching this tomorrow. And uh, what are your thoughts on that chart? I, just, I was looking at the after hours and we got three little, I would say, I don't know what you want to call it, but I want to post this. We have these three red lines, three fat fingers down here to 136.42. Every one of them landed right there at that 136.42. So it definitely makes sense in a way because of the high that we had here earlier today and then the pullback and then the breakout after hours. So I'm going to type this in. I'm going to put me a trend line right here at 136.42. That's going to be my low support for it. I don't want to see it go much lower than that. If it does, we might be able to hit it back. And, and also we'll follow it on the, on the um, a support level on the 200 EMA. And I use, like I said, these three different trend lines for my support levels and the low low is going to be here at 135.61 resistance to break is going to be the 139.14 we do have an ascending kind of pattern going out pennant not a pennant flag but an ascending symmetrical uh, flag going up and with a high of 140.45 so that's where we're going to put resistance level to break at 140.45 I'm going to put a lower support here at 137.94 for a pullback. And I'm going to magnify this up. I'm playing this kind of off the after hours. 137.13. So I'm drawing up trend lines as we go. Let me magnify this back up to the original pattern. I'm going to bring it to a 20 day. But first I'll look at a yearly. We're at a year high about four days ago at 139.54. So that's going to be our resistance to get to to break. And if we break that, we're going to go to 140.45. Pullback, low support, 134.12. As you see, it dipped right here. It runs right into the 34 on a yearly, daily chart. I'm going to pull up the 20-day now. 20-day, one hour. We're in a little channel. We did have a higher high here at the first of the week. Today is Thursday. This was Monday pre-market, and it pulled back ever since. So if we'd recognize this a little bit earlier, I'd have been watching this trade for a bounce maybe. And it did bounce good after hours. So these are going to be your support levels. We're going to have a low support right down here at 135.61. I'm going to draw that into a red line. So I won't forget it. 135.61. Your second support channel is going to be right here at 136.42 to 137.12. Your first support is going to be right here at 137.94. It could be a little bit higher, so I'm going to put a channel in there at 138.28. Between 137.94 and 138.28 is going to be your first support channel. The resistance to break is going to be this number right here. I'm going to put a line right there. It's going to be between 139.14 to 139.46 with a long resistance of 140.45. And who knows where it will go if it goes above that. But I think it needs to consolidate with this great after hours um, bounce that we got right now. So low support, 136.61. The second channel of support, 136.42 to 137.13.
The first channel of support is going to be at 137.94 to 138.28 with a resistance to breakout of 139.14 to 139.46 with a long of 140.45. That's going to be hard to break. If it does break past that, that's going to be great. But I think this is going to be a play that's going to consolidate in a channel between the lows of 138.80 all the way to 139.46. Anything above that is going to be a gift. That's when you might want to decide to take your profit. So we've got a channel. We keep it in this channel. The resistance profit is going to be a gift past 139.46 to 140.45. And that's M. SFT, that's the last trade we're going to talk about today. Always remember, we love stocks and our website. We've added a few things to it. You can, we got it. Well, can you show, can you show the stock portal for one that, second? That's exactly where I'm going, darling. Okay, great. So I just want to show you guys the stock portal. And uh, if you go to our website, www.ilovestocks.com. You'll see here where it says Trader Tools, right beside the home, there's an option there called Stock Portal. So if you ever want to look up a ticker, so let's just put in there, Jim, can you just put in there um, Starbucks? Sure can. Okay. So if you look at Starbucks, you actually get a little blurb, like, you know, the price of the company, you have a link right there to the website, tells you the kind of business they're in, gives a little, a little what's going on, tells you the after hours information, gives you some statistics like the float, um, the insider ownership, the chart, very nice chart, by the way. And then if you go further down, we have a section with blue and yellow. So we see a section there called block trades. And this shows you like where the money is going. So are people buying Starbucks? And this is really block trades, not really from people like you and I, but mostly from the fat cats. Um, and, you know, they're buying Starbucks. I mean, you could see this morning they were already at it right at the open, right at 937. We see the first block trade, 10,000 shares, and then followed by 100,000 shares. Uh, 10 minutes later. So, you know, the key is we don't always know if these are buy and sells. So what's important is if you ever want to come here to the portal and look up a ticker and you see block trades and you see a price and you see the size, look at the price and then look at it in real time and watch and see if as time goes on, like half an hour later, 20 minutes later, is the price of the stock going higher than the price that that, that shows what they did because we don't know if that was a buy or a sell. So this is why you have to wait and see. So if I would have looked at this right at the open and go, okay, 9008, uh, I don't know if that's a buy or a sell. And then we see, you know, 9007, another one at 9003 at 10 o'clock. Then we see at 1028, another one for 9027. And then we start to see at 1130, 9022. So you're wondering, hmm, is this a buy or a sell? But already we're like, you know, 15, 15 cents higher than the one from the morning. So maybe at that point, it's kind of safe to say that that order was a buy. And then over to the right, you have all the SEC filings. So anything you want to see, Form 4s, um, 8Ks, 10K, 10Q, everything that's needed is there. And if you scroll a little further, you'll have a list, you'll have some news that anything that's connected with Starbucks will be listed below. Oh my God, that drink looks so good. I'm just looking at this right now. Um, the drink there that has the Starbucks tie dye Frappuccino, but it actually says it doesn't look as, it may not look as stunning as it does in the photo, but this is an Instagrammable drink. Wow. Okay. I wonder what's in that drink. Looks like a banana slushy. And you so, click that on anyways, and it brings you straight to yeah. the news. Look at that. Sorry? Oh, I just clicked yeah, it on. Click and let him, yeah. Yeah, it brings you right into the article. Oh, my God, that drink looks so good. I wonder how they make that drink. Like, that looks like it's a lot of work. I'm going to get one. Um, that looks delicious. I might even get one. I mean, Starbucks is just across the street. What is that called? In over 15 I years. die. Frappuccino. Okay. Anyway, so um, this is the information on our portal. I get a lot of messages from people saying, how do you get a block trade report? Uh, it's a custom report, so you know what? If you ever want to use it and look at them, you're welcome to come to this website. 
the ilovestocks.com website anytime. Go to the trader tools and go to stock portal. And you can just type in the ticker and you'll get what you want. You get the news, the filings, the block reports, and, and the chart. So um, hopefully that will help you. And if you have any questions, you can always um, come to the room and ask us because uh, we have a free trial or you're welcome to ask us in the YouTube video. So that's it. So thank you so much, guys. And tomorrow's Friday, so we won't be doing a video tomorrow, but we'll definitely be doing one on the weekend. So I wish you all an amazing trading day tomorrow and a fabulous weekend. And Jim, anything else to add? Uh, you more or less summed it up, but I'm going to bring you right straight here to the, our website again. We do have a link here that takes us straight to Twitter. Hit that follow button, follow us on Twitter. You can always look at posts that we make throughout the day. We also have um, our stock twits pages on here, both Vegas and I, Pinner Guys, Facebook. Then you can hit this. It'll take you straight to the YouTube channel. So if you pull up ilovestocks.com, you can always just follow our latest YouTube channels. And we try to put one in every day if we can. And I've done a couple of reports. I've also done a couple of lessons on here. You can hit this video right here, and it'll take you to uh, just our old ones that we used to have. Plus, I'm, I'm do, we're doing lessons of, of the week. You can follow them on there, too. But this is I Love Stocks. And today's date is July 18th, 2019. And we wish everybody a great trading week tomorrow, next week, and have a good day tomorrow.